Hi there. Today I'll be giving a tutorial on how to use Crosslight software to simulate circuits with mesh devices. First, let's open Nova TCAD. This example uses a dynamical test circuit of IGBT. This is the circuit right here. This is the IGBT and this is the FWD. The other devices are all elements. Only these two devices use mesh devices. Let's first build a project you can see supreme. In this project, we're going to use an already existing structure built by C Supreme. All right, now let's run this. All right, and now let's check the result. This is the structure, and this is the gates. The upper aluminum and back silicon are in contact. Let's set the contact according to their positions. I'll set the top aluminum as contact 1. For its coordinates, we can look at the structure, 0 to 24. Like contact 1, we can set the position of contacts 2, 3, 4, then generate and save. In the spice test, if there are more than two mesh devices, we need to make subcontents to put in other mesh devices. In this example, we'll make we'll make subcontents to build FWD. Opening C Supreme, we're still going to use an existing structure. Paying extra attention here, the output name of the file in subcontents should be the same as in the main contents. Now let's run the input file in the subcontents. Let's watch. This is FWD. We can set the contact just like before. Here the position had been fitted. We can generate that directly. Now we've finished the structure. In the circuit test, we need to use the sole file of Apsis. Alright, we're going to want to use circuit.sol. Simultaneously, let's open its subcontents. On the left are the main contents, and on the right are the subcontents. We need to include spice netlist when we are using dot sol to test circuit. This right here is the netlist which we've already written. First we're going to want to induce the netlist. The first line must be a command line commanded by a pound sign. The first letter V 
This means this is the voltage source. R means resistor. L means inductance. And C means capacitance, but we don't see this letter yet. The two values behind the element is the node number. The last value is the number of its property. It can also be a pulse. The first pulse value represents its origin level. The second value represents its pulse level. The third value represents the time delay of the pulse. The fourth value represents the rise time of the pulse. The fifth value represents the fall time of the pulse. And the sixth value represents the pulse time. The last value represents the period. The plus sign represents the continuation character. This paragraph contains the parameters of the model. This is a diode model. If we replace the mesh diode with the element diode, then we'll only have one mesh device in the circuit. So we can replace the dev2 with fwd. This line is the transient scan setting, which is for time increase and total time. In crosslight, this line can be omitted. The last line represents the end. By connecting all the nodes, it will form the circuit as the picture shows. Now let's compare this to the traditional soul. Firstly, it expands the 2D simulation to 3D. The Z direction of the main structure can be set like this. We can set the size and the subcontents here. This traditional sentence should begin and end with begin underscore Z mater and end underscore Z mater. We should manipulate the main contents and subcontents the same way. If the circuit uses two mesh devices, as our example does, we need to include the subpath of its sub device. It needs these three sentences right here. In the last sentence, it includes the name of the soul and subcontents. It will ignore unnecessary sentences and only extract useful ones. Then we can use the command minispice to include the sur file which we had mentioned before. And at the same time we should add the device name. It can be shown in netlist. Here it used four contacts. The relation of contact number and the node can be set here. It can also be shown in the netlist file. The below sentence will add the relation about nodes and contact in the subcontents. This is FWD. Now the sir and the soul have banded. Finally, we should scan the circuit in soul. After equilibrium, we should add static stress, for example, DC. This should use virtual underscore time. In netlist, static scan corresponds VDD. Then add dynamical scan, which should use time. Dynamical scan corresponds pulse. The time and pulse should correspond to the time in soul. Alright, now let's run the project. We can finish the united simulation of main.soul and sub.soul by only running main.soul. The main.soul and sub.soul are both 2D structures. In the final state, it will show two two-dimensional structures. Now the simulation is finished, let's check the result. These are the structures. The front is IGBT and the back is FWD. This is the contact of IGBT. These two are gates. Upper is source and the lower is drain.
The back is FWD. The upper is the anode and the lower is the cathode. Now let's talk about how to plot node information versus time. When drawing current, we must use the parameter element. Since it's a vector, we need an element to give it the direction. If we're trying to draw a voltage, we can omit the parameter element. Because it's a scalar, we don't need the direction. Alright, so this is the gate source voltage graph, and this is the gate voltage graph on IGBT. This is the voltage overswing graph, and this is the current overswing graph. Alright, well that just about sums up our tutorial. Thanks for tuning in, hope to see you soon.